Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, we have a British Ghanaian gaming collective offering a safe space for all. A young man using art to cope with autism. And we'll take a look at Viola Davis's latest film, The Woman King. Let's get on with the show. And let's start the show with some highlights of the latest entertainment news from around the world. A Tanzanian film, Vuta Nkuvute, has been shortlisted for an Academy Award, ending a two-decade wait for the country's participation in the film industry's biggest ceremony. The film tells the story of a young Indian Zanzibari woman whose romance blossoms on the back of a political revolt in the last days of British imperial rule. Tanzania's first appearance at the Academy Awards was Mangazi, the ancient one, in 2002. And in some music news, pop superstar Rihanna is making a return to the live music stage. The singer shared a picture of an NFL-branded football on her Instagram, confirming rumors that she was negotiating to headline the next halftime show. Her management, Rock Nation, also confirmed the singer's participation in a statement. And in some more music news, Nigerian Afrobeat star Rema has set a new record, beating records previously set by Wizkid, Banner Boy, Tens, and others. Rema is now the most listened to African musician on streaming platform Spotify for the month of September 2022. And now to some gaming news, a British Ghanaian's collective is offering gamers a safe space regardless of ethnicity, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Let's take a look. Behind a keypad locked door, Annabelle Ashley Anthony is taking on her brother Alan in Mortal Kombat. That is, of course, the video game. How do you go? How do you go? This is Melanin Gamers. It's a collective dedicated to offering a safe space to online gamers regardless of ethnicity, sexual orientation or gender identity. It was set up by British Ghanaian gamer Ashley Anthony and her two brothers after Alan was harassed online because of the colour of his skin. Why is it always like, oh, someone's saying something, mute your mic, do this, do that, do that. Don't, don't stream with a camera on so no one knows. All of these things are things that the victim has to do because of the bully. And I'm like, well, get rid of the bully. <laughs> the bully is the problem. Why is the victim bending over backwards doing all of these stuff? Melanin Gamers has since accrued more than 4,000 gamers worldwide. It's hosted tournaments sponsored by industry giants like Electronic Arts and Ubisoft. One member is Rita Lucia Henry Ando. By streaming and commentating on video games, she makes around $100 per month and aims to make it her full-time job by the end of the year. I want to say that gaming is for everyone. It's not just for the cis white man anymore. It's not. It's for everyone as it always has been, as it was intended. And I think we should do more to be kinder as a community. Just be kinder. Henry Ando hosted her own global tournament last month. Clean, easy. She says when she encounters bigotry, she will try to educate but also won't hesitate to kick people out. The space is for me and my people. And if my own people don't feel safe in there and I don't feel safe in there, then what am I even doing in my time? Less than 4.5% of the world's gamers lived in sub-Saharan Africa last year. Market data from Statista has shown. But cheaper data costs could help the market grow. And Ghana is one of the countries leading the way. According to eSports analytics company Newzu, the West African country had the continent's second highest per capita gaming population in 2021, 27% of citizens actively playing. Under the neon lights of melanin gamers, they can do so safe from abuse. A movie portraying an all-female warrior unit that centuries ago defended the West African kingdom of Dahomey, what is now the country of Benin, is drawing both praise and criticism. VOA's Penelope Polu reports The Woman King has an all-black and mostly female cast, a first for major Hollywood motion picture, but some critics note that it had little African involvement. 
Rarely does Hollywood portray Africa or Africans except through the eyes of outsiders. Not so the woman king. Led by General Naniska, the Agoji warriors, a fearsome women's unit, slay their enemies, European and African slave traders. Academy Award winner Viola Davis says she identifies with her warrior character. I saw myself within the same way I see my white counterparts. And it wasn't until I went out into the world and the industry that I realized the world and the industry does not see me the same way. Ready for war. The, the Agoji story, many know about it, heard about it, but to see it on screen, it's a different experience. Bukari Sawadogo, who teaches at City University in New York, notes there is both excitement and criticism surrounding the film. This is uh, African stories, but in terms of uh, how he was rep uh, represented and the movie was made, there was little active African involvement in the movie, be it in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. It took seven years and upwards of $50 million to make The Woman King, which was shot in South Africa. Kathy Schulman, who helped produce the film, says it was an uphill battle getting Hollywood to finance it. The Black Panther opened a certain door, right? The Black Panther said, imagine an African nation with agency. And I said, well, why do we have to imagine it? How about an actual African nation with agency? You know, each one of these things is a step. Actors trained rigorously for the combat scenes, says Sheila Tim, who co-stars as a Goji warrior, Amenza. We were trying to portray these women who were some of the most extraordinary warriors the world has ever seen. We wanted to do it right. Noting the Kingdom of Dahomey took part in selling other Africans into slavery, there have been calls to boycott the film. Yet, according to The Hollywood Reporter, the film's opening weekend in the U.S. exceeded expectations, grossing $19 million. Women made up 58% of all ticket buyers, according to post track exit polling. Black moviegoers made up 56% of the audience. Train hard, fight harder. You know, it is a fact that women are the primary buyers of content. That's film, that's television, that's streaming. And so really what you're doing is asking to make a movie for the majority, not the minority. Despite controversies, the film has generated excitement in Africa and among the African diaspora, says Sawadogo. And they can really uh, you know, identify with it even more. Uh, even this morning I saw a post urging everybody to go see the movie because this movie is about us. So you have a, a pride there uh, in the immigrant communities to see, uh, to go see uh, this movie. Viola Davis wants more films produced about empowered black people, especially women, in Africa and America. We've got to normalize it. Listen, we've been here just as long as everyone else since 1612 in a completely different capacity, but we are human too. We are the home! Penelope Pulu, VOA News, Washington. Don't know take my power, my power, my power. Don't know take my power, my power. And now to some art news. Joe Becker is a 21-year-old artist with autism who with his mother runs a successful online business selling his drawings. VOA's Faiza El Masri brings us the story from Bristol in Virginia. So today you're gonna do something from Mimi's garden? I, I guess, but I don't have to do all of it. Well, you can get started on it. My name is Joe and I am 21 years old. I did a lot of good arts like animals and insects and all that and I did some background paintings 2003 or something. I think that's when I started. I was in preschool then. I was really really little. He was diagnosed with autism when he was uh, just turning four we suspected some things before that. As he got a little bit older and um, 
he was diagnosed with epilepsy in middle school. He started to use drawing not only for, for fun, but I think it was also a way to cope, a way to process maybe some feelings he was having. And I still think he does that. When my friends and other adults see my art, they say, way to go, Joe. I started my website like after when I finished and was done with high school. Artfully Joe, it's called now. I had Joe home for about a year uh, before we started Artfully Joe. Right now he has about 29, 30 items, a lot of which are custom items that people can commission him to order. He calls me a momager. <laughs> people love my flower pictures. And I've drawn a lot of sunflowers and roses and other flowers. These are some pieces that he's already done in various sizes. Berries and a beautiful botanical that he did. Joe's expanded into some note cards and, and uh, we did a Valentine this year. And for 2022, he did a logo, a butterfly for Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month. And he did a t-shirt also with that logo. But this one's going to be a gift since this is from my parents' garden. Joe wants to give this to them. I feel very glad about that. We're all done for today. We're Good all job. Done for today. Good job. The U.S. Open recently concluded in New York City, but just a few miles from Arthur Ashe Stadium is a community of tennis players that may not receive the attention of the Open, but share a similar dedication and commitment to the sport. Aaron Ronin has the story. For three weeks every summer, the elite tennis world gathers in Flushing, New York for the U.S. Open. A few miles away stand the Lincoln Terrace Park tennis courts, where players, most of them African-American, have built their skills in the shadow of one of the sport's four Grand Slam tournaments. Since the 1960s, these 11 courts have offered a sanctuary from racism and an opportunity for African-Americans to build a community of tennis enthusiasts. This is a social community, so we like to talk, and we brought food and we sit over there on the bleachers and we socialize and we play tennis. To me, this is home. Many also credit Serena and Venus Williams for keeping the balls bouncing at these courts. I believe, yes, before Serena and Venus, this place existed. It was always great, but with them being in the picture of becoming great tennis players, it also helped this neighborhood and the tennis community, both her and her sister, help popularize tennis. After this year's U.S. Open, one wonders if the next African-American tennis superstar may already be practicing here at Lincoln Terrace Park Tennis Courts. Aaron Raynan for VOA News, New York City. Thank you so much for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more of your entertainment news, check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye, everyone.